When you open a supply project, organization is key. Um, keeping all of the files and folders for a project organized is extremely important. Items are not always embedded into that INDD file, like I said in the previous video. And so you need to make sure that all the different assets or all the different items that are included in the project are somehow included in that package folder. And there is a difference between a properly organized and packaged folder and a folder that just has all the things that you need in it. And so I said in the previous video that you want a document fonts folder that has the fonts and you want a links folder that has all the pictures in it. You could in theory just provide those things to whoever you're giving the file to. You could say here are all the fonts and here are all the pictures. But unless you have a properly packaged InDesign project, when whoever you give the file to opens it, it will not work properly. They'll have to fix part of of what you gave them. And that's actually what you're going to do for your first project in Art 1200. I've given you a broken InDesign project. I've given you all the assets that you need, but I haven't give it to you, given it to you in a packaged file. And so when you open the files, you're going to have errors that you're going to have to troubleshoot. And what I hope from you doing that project is you'll learn why it's important to always give a properly packaged project instead of just handing someone a clump of files. And you don't even have to organize it yourself. As we'll learn in later slides, InDesign will do it for you, so you'll just have to remember to use InDesign's features to create that package folder. Another reason that you need to make sure that you give a properly packaged InDesign project is because things are not embedded into InDesign, they are linked to where they are stored. And so if you place a picture on page one and you break the link between where InDesign thinks the file is stored and where it's actually stored, maybe you change the name of the file or you delete the file by accident or you just move it from one part of your computer to another, you can break the link and what will happen is that image will print blurry or it won't print at all depending on the resolution of the image. On a side note, um, images will always look blurry in InDesign because InDesign shows you a low resolution preview and so keep that in mind um, as you're working through the project. If it really bugs you, you can use the view menu and you can change the display performance to high quality. When you are saving a supply project, let's say someone gave you a properly packaged InDesign project and you're editing it, you can choose file save or file save as and they do two completely different things. And so first, if you're doing editing in the file and you have the properly packaged um, project that someone gave you, you can just hit file save as long as you haven't added new pictures or new typefaces. Choose file save and it will save whatever the changes are and it will save it in the exact same spot that you have been working which should be inside that properly packaged folder meaning you could then pass that folder on to someone else and there shouldn't be any issues. Um, if you change the name of files or you change typefaces or you add new pictures then you have to repackage. But as long as you don't do those things, you can hit File Save and it will save your changes. Maybe you change how big a picture is on a page or you rotate the picture or you add more text, but the text is using the same typeface that you were using before. Um, then you don't have to repackage. If you choose File Save As, you're saving a copy or another version of the file. And in that case, you can still save as and you don't have to repackage as long as you abide by those other rules for file save. So as long as you're not adding new typefaces, you're not adding new pictures, and you're not changing file names or things like that. If you choose file save as and you save that new file inside the package folder, so now you have two .indd files, then it's still perfectly okay. If you choose file save as and you decide to save it somewhere else, let's say that on the left side of your screen you have the package folder that someone gave you and on the right side of your screen you're going to save a copy just as a copy as a backup. That file will be all by itself on the right hand side and so it won't include any of the typefaces or any of the pictures or anything like that that are included in your document fonts and your links folder that are on the left side of your screen in the package. So keep that in mind. If you're going to save a copy, go ahead and save a copy inside the package folder or um, save a copy and then package that copy because every time you package a project using the InDesign feature file and then package, it will recreate that package folder for you and you'll get a copy of everything that you need. When you are saving a project, whether it is a supply 
uh, project or a new project, and it doesn't matter if you're an InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, Microsoft Word, etc., you should always ask yourself a series of questions. Where do you want to save your work? Visualize your workflow. I'm a very visual person. Draw a workflow chart to know where you're saving your project. The number one question that I get from students is, I don't know where my project is. Where did it go? And on the Macs in the labs at the South City campus, by default, it's going to try to put your project in the documents folder. And so if you don't purposefully choose exactly where you want your work to go, it's going to be in documents, uh, in the documents folder on your computer, which is not the default place that most people go to look for their project. They look on their desktop, they look on their, on their flash drive, things like that. You also need to consider what your intended output is. Um, are you going to print it? Are you going to put it on a website? Are you the intended audience? Is someone else going to receive the project? Are you creating an ebook? Because that can affect what you do with your file when you're saving it. You will affect how you prep the file, how you prep the artwork and the text that you put into the file, but it will also affect um, the choices you have to make when you're packaging or when you're exporting it to um, a new file format. Going along with that, you need to then ask yourself, what is the correct file format for my intended output? If I'm going to print something, I probably want to choose a print file format. And if I'm going to put it on the web, I want to choose a web file format. And then last but not least, you should always ask yourself, are my uh, files organized? At the very least, are they organized in such a way that you can figure out where things are at quickly when you need them? And then in the greater sense, if you have to share files with someone and you plan to hand your files to somebody else, you should make it so that they don't have to hunt down what they're looking for. I get a lot of students that, excuse me, um, I will get a lot of students that will start to do some work on the side while they're in college, and you kind of take any job that, that will allow you to do their work for them when you're in college because you're trying to get some experience. And they come to me and they ask for help because they're just confused because whoever they found to work for is just dumping files onto a server or they're emailing a bunch of files. They're not organized. They don't know which files to use. Uh, one really good example was a student was making some posters and they were provided with a database that had all of the typefaces in them. But they had like 12 different copies of every typeface. And when we went to load them in the computer, not a single one worked. And in the files that they were told to edit, they had like six different versions of each typeface being used. It was, it was just a complete mess. And so that student spent way more time trying to figure out which typefaces to use and where to find them and how to fix them. And in the end, he had to just go and find them on the internet and download his own version of those, those typefaces and use them. And so if you were handing files over someone, you don't want to be that person that gives them a hot mess, that they have, that whoever you give the files to has to um, basically translate it and decipher what you were trying to, to give them. And so you should make sure that your files are organized in such a way that it's really easy for the person who you're giving the files to to kind of pick them up and just jump in and start running with the project. What's great about InDesign is if you properly package your InDesign project, InDesign will do it for you and it's industry standard. So if you're giving someone InDesign or properly packaged InDesign files, and so, so is everybody else, you don't have to spend an hour and a half trying to figure out what someone was trying to give you. You know exactly what a properly packaged InDesign project is. Immediately when you get the files, you know if they're right or they're wrong. And if they're right, you can just jump in head first, dive in and get ready and get started. And if it's not properly packaged, you can say, wait a minute, please send me a properly packaged InDesign project because that will allow both of us to work more efficiently.